Hey, what's up, guys? So, <clears throat> there's no face cam for this um, video because I I notice uh, when I have the face cam, my phone starts to lag a bit, and especially with Skylanders because this game uses up more resources. So, I'm just gonna do like as quickly as possible, like just go over like what I do because my buddy Taz. Is having like a lot of progression issues and I don't understand like why I have a feeling he he's way more active than me in the game because his heroes are more over leveled but like if you notice my heroes like I'm about to cap out on blast zone and I can't um, power him up anymore or well, I could power him up up to plus three but then after that I won't be able to get him up to plus 5. But my boomer, I just did some rolls and I got lucky enough to get some more um some more um soul stones for him. So I have enough to power him up, but I can't evolve him. I would be short by quite a bit. Because I need to power him up first and then I will need to evolve him. And I already did all my exchanges for him. So I might need to um, start farming his scenario. I don't know if it's on easy or normal, but either way it's going to be pretty difficult. But I think it'll be worth it to try and farm up some boomer shards. And my kaboom, I need three more um, soul stones to upgrade him up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to farm the elixirs um, right now. So that I can upgrade Kaboom and upgrade Boomer. I'm going to combine the 10 necessary to get his legendary elixir. I don't know how much gold it's going to be to combine it. But I feel like it'll be worth it because getting a legendary elixir is pretty hard uh, for me. Because I don't have the resources to be able to farm that scenario just yet so getting a five star boomer would be uh pretty good for me and then awakening him after that and i'm i really wanted to awaken my kaboom but i still need like a lot of shards for that but after that i have my five star right here and i have her four star plus three and i haven't been upgrading her as much because this is my core team right here these three and my kaboom i've been steadily just farming him up getting his shards like i just requested for kaboom shards that's why i'm gonna do the elixir because somebody will donate the shards necessary for me and I've also been farming him up as well. Now I don't, I can't get his um soul stones because he's a nat five, so I have to roll them. Or you can get them from the arena shop. You can get omni stones, and that's how you upgrade um five stars, which is really slow, but it's better than nothing. And then eventually they're gonna have a vent or something that we can do to get those soul stones and also you can work on your wham shell get him up he's a very good hero a water hero i haven't worked on mine because i need the elixirs which i'm about to start doing farming elixirs and wild storm is a monster i saw jt do video on him and he needs to be awakened and he just becomes monstrous But uh, on Awaken, he's still pretty good. And that's what this is what I do. I farm all of these heroes up to level 20. All of them, they give you gems. And you you just take them up to level 20. And that helps you like not get, ca not get capped. As you can see, I have a bunch of them at level 1 still. So... And then I'm also farming like um, this guy, he's up to level 34. I use him in some scenarios. I also have my Enigma, which I also use in some scenarios. And I have um, 
some soul stones for him so I can power him up to plus two and the thing about it like the quest isn't important you can complete these quests whenever you want and like the reward like the skill stones the skill stones are good but they're so rare that um a lot of the since the game is relatively new a lot of people don't know what heroes to upgrade with the skill stones so there's really no point in being in a rush to like use them and the gold is fine but you only like 10,000 gold like the quest isn't as important right now especially since like some of these quests are extremely difficult like clear 30 floors of the mirage tower like there's people who are more advanced in the game that struggle to even clear 40 like the omni stones are right there clear 5 7 normal like the missions are relatively like they're not hard but they're not important especially because you have other things that require your use of energy like uh when i log in i look at the missions and then I see, I go to daily missions, and then I always go for the gems, and I go for the energy missions. Anything that give energy, that's what I do. If it doesn't give energy, then I try to do it if I have extra energy, but more than likely, I'm not going to do it. Because wasting energy on, like, like, let me show you an example. I think it's challenges. Alright, so the Mirage Tower, Realm of Souls, Cave of Gold. On the Cave of Gold, I just do Stage 2. It's 15 energy and it gives you some pretty decent gold. I think I've gotten like an 18,000 gold drop. And that's that's like a, that's way more than what I usually get. I think I usually get like around 4,800 gold. I'm not so sure. But I think like farming all three, I get like 16,000 gold, which is fine for me. And like, I don't really, this isn't really important. Like farming a higher stage, like if you could go up like higher, go for it. But it go, uses more energy. Like the difference between the second floor is 15 and the third floor would be 21 energy. That's six energy that you can be using somewhere else. Like, I don't really do any of these. I've never even been inside this game mode right here. I just know what's there. But that's too expensive. 10 energy for one stage run. That's a bit excessive. And let's see. Alright. So I farm this scenario right here. I do the the runs to get the golden eggs uh that's currently like the daily thing where it gives you 150 gems and i've i farm this scenario i farm currently in farming stage five each one is four energy so it doesn't matter which one you run but i run stage five to get the rune drop uh strike four star and the shard drops for kaboom and besides that, um, the daily missions, I go for collect three green easter eggs, collect nine green easter eggs, and the one that I try to do is collect nine colorful easter eggs, and that gives you a lot of gold. Sorry about that. So, collect nine colorful easter eggs is good and it's worth it but i usually like fall asleep before i even manage to do it because um i usually play late at night when i have the time so i usually fall asleep doing that but the arena arena ones i always do this and starting this week like today i'm i'm already like doing pretty poorly but Use up all of your arena gears every time you have an opportunity hourly. Use up your arena arena gears because look, you see this. I got 150, 150 gems from the arena. But the important thing is collect your premium omni stones 
which you can use to upgrade your kaboom and you can also use your rare omni stones to upgrade your um i think it's boomer and wham shell and these are the easiest two to get and then if you do your arenas enough then you can purchase your um heroic omni stones and your legendary omni stones now this is my strategy for arena and i don't know if it's a good strategy or not but this is this is what i did um last week because like when you go to duel like some of these matchups are really look this is my buddy tasman right here and I can really, his um, Stormblade is really strong. And I think I my team counters it. Yeah. But it's still like, it's so hard to beat him because of his um, Smolder Dash. And then um, his, his uh, green Stealth Elf counters my... A boomer. His stealth elf counters my boomer. And then his smolder dash is neutral to my team. So I don't know how he... Well, it's because his Stormblade is all 57 plus 2. Yeah, so he has some very good heroes. But what I do is I literally just um go into the arena... And I'll pick a random person and then I just drop my rank. And usually I try to stay around rank 900. Like throughout the whole week. And then gradually I just beat like the lower lower tier people. To get the reward. So I'll do like drop 5 in 1 hour. And then um, I'll win some matches to get the points. And then I drop drop the next ones to stay low because like going up against a, like um my buddy Tasman, like if I had to battle him every single time, I'm not gonna win every matchup. So instead of like going higher and higher, I just stay low purposely. So that I can get some more of these uh, arena arena points whatever they're called so i can get my premium omni stones rare omni stones heroic and legendary so i'm gonna try very very hard to stay on top of that and collect all of those um omni stones for exchanging I think I already got my Kaboom stones, yep. So, this is another thing, the guild shop. The guild shop, I, I think somebody said that there's... Oh, let me see. There is water. These, these statues are not worth it because they only provide, like, small percentage increases to one... What is up with that? To only one, like, element. So it's not really worth it to to purchase them because, like, you use different elements for each scenario. So just having, like, your one setup, upgrading, what, what is up with that? It's not really worth it. For me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase tri-tip. And just keep buying his Omni Stone since uh, eventually they'll balance like the game out, and then they'll some of these heroes might become meta. And having a Nat Five is always good. I have Ambush already, so I was gonna try and upgrade him, but then I realized that, like I'd rather go for a hero that I don't have. And Tritip seems like a good Nat Five. He's a good um tanky hero. Uh, I forgot what his um, element is, but it's good to have like a di diversity of heroes. And some people say that having like nat fives are good initially, 
but like they bottle out because you can't power them up what people don't realize is uh sure you can't power them up but you can max them out and if you buy the omni stones you'll have the the necessary tools to eventually power them up but runes are huge runes will literally make your hero like if you have bad runes like this strike rune right here is three star and that's terrible so I should farm scenario two to get him a four star rune and six all of his runes are pretty bad but you as you can see like you know two star five star two star strike five rune like your runes will literally make your hero like if you have bad runes the hero's gonna underperform like look at this um i actually powered them up, powered up some runes to get some gems but look at this 396 attack on a detail strike rune one and he has a crit rate increase three percent so this this is a pretty good rune and then attack plus 15 percent and he has a boost uh plus 77 attack so this is a pretty good rune right there and look at this plus four percent attack like it's not even comparable your runes will literally determine how good your hero is look 148 attack 396 attack sure your skill like powering up a hero is good but the power up is only a 30 point increase from 2 to 3 it's only 30 points powering up the rune will be a similar a similar increase if I were to power up a rune it's a plus plus five as you can see let me see if I can find a, a rune plus three attack all right let's power it up one time and that's a 30 point increase right there see like Sure, powering up a hero is, like, that's what you need to do in order to, ev like, evolve them or whatever. But these are already, this is already an F5. You don't need to power them up. You can get it to level 60. Or you can, you can, um, you can get it to level 60 and that'll take a while. Or you can awaken them and unlock their ability. Sends two snakes towards an enemy and cast heal down for two turns. Like, awakening your heroes, like, kaboom, awaken, jumps on all enemies to attack and cast explode for five turns. So his, his skill becomes an AoE effect. 